Hello and thank you for joining us. I'm Wilson Stribling. Welcome to another edition of At Issue, where we discuss and debate the issues facing the state of Mississippi and how these issues impact you. The 2018 legislative session has come to a close and the finger pointing has already begun. Not between Republicans and Democrats, rather between the House and the Senate. Many we've spoken with have described the session as disappointing. Brandon and Austin are here with us as always, and they will have a lot to say on this in just a moment. But first, we want to give you a brief rundown of which which big items passed and which did not. We start with what did make it through. Lawmakers approved the roughly $6 billion state budget to fund government agencies. They also passed a $280 million bond bill that includes $50 million for local bridges, $82 million for universities, and $25 million for community colleges. $45 million would help state agencies and another $45 million would help Ingalls shipbuilding. Finally, lawmakers passed and Governor Bryant signed into law a stricter abortion ban that would prohibit the procedure after 15 weeks gestation. The law is being challenged in federal court and is currently under a temporary restraining order. Here is a look at what did not pass. The much anticipated rewrite of the funding formula for school districts died in the Senate. Both sides were deadlocked and could not reach agreement on a, comp on a comprehensive infrastructure improvement plan. And there was no, again, no agreement on how to spend BP oil spill settlement money. MPB's Mark Rigsby spoke with Governor Bryant to get his thoughts on the session. The governor says he plans to make an announcement about infrastructure next week. The most important uh, responsibility of the legislature is to appropriate uh, nearly $6 billion of taxpayers' money. I think they did a good job of that. I think we've got a conservative, balanced budget uh, with no tax increases. I think you're going to see that we have had probably $60 million more year over year, so more revenue came in. That meant some increases in some agencies very near to me, like Child Protection Services, Medicaid, got their deficit down to about $10 million. We're going to have another patrol school. So hopefully we'll put another um, 50 or 60 patrolmen on the road. Uh, I was very encouraged that we are protecting the unborn life beginning at 15 weeks. So uh, as important as that bill is to me, uh, it was one that uh, I think was hard fought and will be into the future. So some good things happen. What about the big ticket items that everyone was talking about even before the session began? Yeah. Rewriting the education funding formula and a way to fund road and bridge improvements? Well, I think one of the most important things is the road and bridges. I, I would have been very encouraged and supported the rewriting of the MAEP formula. I think we would have got more funding into the poor school systems where it's needed. Uh, we, uh, we desperately need to work on roads and bridges. Uh, I'll have more to say about that next week, but we probably got 120, 130 bridges that could collapse at any time. Uh, it, it, there are times when you can make a decision about supporting something, and then there's times when you must support something. Where do you think both of those issues derailed in the legislative process? You know, the process is so difficult at times because one bill will cause a failure of another one. If one legislator fails to take up a bill, the other one says, well, I won't take yours up. And, and unfortunately, it begins to break down over a personal issue. But I think the best thing to do is uh, just now um, is realize where we're at. If there are needs for a special session in the future, that certainly is a possibility. There's four or five days um, saved up that would be uh, that would allow the governor to bring them back. And so we're looking at uh, what needs to be done, particularly with these bridges. Lives are in danger, and, and I intend to make a decision fairly soon of how we'd go about protecting those. Republican House Speaker Philip Gunn says the House did its part by passing big items like education and infrastructure, but those items died in the Senate. The Speaker addressed those issues with reporters on Wednesday. There were three things that were of major importance to us in the House of Representatives. Number one was a rewrite of the education funding formula. Number two was to come forward with a road and bridge plan. Number three was Medicaid. I will tell you that we in the House delivered on all three of those goals. As you know, we passed the education rewrite formula early in the session, maybe the second week, as I recall, and uh, sent it to the Senate for consideration. This was a product that was worked on uh, House and Senate for over a year and a half. I, you know, we, uh, as you know, going back even to, to 2016, we started discussions about this. We had meetings all during the year of 2017, statewide meetings. 
Ed Build was here. Um, they met all around the state with superintendents and other stakeholders, and uh, it was just a, a, a well-discussed plan, and uh, we did our part on the House. I'm very proud of our House members who voted for that. I think it was a better way to fund schools. I think it was an opportunity for us to make a real impact on our education system. For whatever reason, the bill failed in the Senate. I'm disappointed that the senators who didn't vote for it chose to do so. I think we missed a real opportunity there. But as far as House priority items, as far as what we in the House set out to do, we passed that bill. The second item on our agenda was roads and bridges. We brought forward what we thought was a very solid policy on House Bill 722. House Bill 722 uh, proposed to take the use tax, which is already coming in, already part of the state revenue, <coughs> and take about a third of that and put it towards helping the counties with their roads, helping the cities with their roads. Solid public policy. It was a statement of priority by the House of Representatives that we are serious about roads, and we passed it in short order, as I recall, within the first two or three weeks of the session. We said we were going to pass education funding. We did. We said we were going to pass a road plan. We did. We said we were going to pass a Medicaid bill. We did. So if, if I'll, I'll let you draw your own conclusions about why those things don't don't seem to succeed on the other side of the building. I can only speak for us, and I will tell you that we set out to do certain things this year, and we accomplished them, and I'm proud of that. Well, Lieutenant Governor Tate Reeves has a different take on why the big items this session failed. Reeves says opponents of changing the education funding formula did an excellent job of creating confusion to kill the bill in the Senate, and that individual projects inserted by the House derailed the Senate's billion-dollar infrastructure bill and legislation on how to spend the BP settlement money. Yet again, in the House of Representatives, they felt as if the fact that next year is an election year would lead me to be willing to accept a deal that is just simply unacceptable. But when you talk about the Bridge Act, I think it's important to not stop at 10 second sound bites, but actually get down to the policy matters that ought to matter to people who are elected to serve in this building. The section, this is section by section, this is the House strike all, this is the Senate strike all. Sex, everything highlighted is exactly the same. And so as you go through and look, what you see is, in the first three pages, virtually very, very similar. And then you get to the last two pages, and what you find is all of the individual projects that were put in the Bridge Act in the House of Representatives. And so as you look at the individual projects, and as I looked at them, I'm not sure why it is a state responsibility to pave city streets in Itabina, Mississippi. And so while I know there is give and take in any negotiations, and there will be good give and take in the future, I think that's one of the major sticking points is the individual projects that were asked for this, the Senate to take to get this big major infrastructure bill done. I'm, I'm disappointed that the uh, rewrite of the education funding formula did not uh, get it across the finish line. There was not, obviously, um, the adequate number of votes in the Mississippi Senate to get that bill passed this year, um, although we tried very hard. And so that particular bill uh, is, a, is a definite disappointment to me. MPB's Mark Rigsby spoke with lawmakers on both sides to get their thoughts on the session. The Senate, the Senate most of the time is their way or the highway. You know, negotiation is negotiation. You give a little bit to, to try to make something work, and if, it, if, it, if, it, if, if you think you've given too much, then you stop. But my point is, yes, the frustration is that I don't think the Senate 
worked on as hard as we did to come up with good a good piece of legislation, like our bills dealing with uh, the uh, road and bridges and infrastructure. And I think they did a highly publicized deal right there at the last, and this is all I'm going to do, and you know, we'll just not have one if y'all don't agree to ours. We just, you know, we've been doing this for about, with this lieutenant governor, for about uh, uh, seven years. And it's just, it's just uh, sort of like uh, fingernails on a chalkboard. It's just very irritating. What was the biggest disappointment for you? Um, I, I think, I think probably the education form of the rewrite the uh, you know there's a lot of different narratives that are going on out there uh, and depending on who you're listening to is and filtering the information you get you'd get one thing but it really was going to be good for the state of Mississippi and for the students where do you place the blame well I, I think um, there's a whole lot of politics that are going on we have an election year next year um, and you have this sort of rivalry between the House and the Senate, and this is just my assessment of it, I, I think there'd be a lot of other members that would probably back this up, that um, as to, to who's, who's running the show, and, and so um, that, that factors in, into every piece of legislation that either comes out of the House into the Senate or the Senate to the House, and more so what comes out of the House, I think, to the Senate, and for whatever reason, uh, not being in those meetings or those discussions, I, uh, I can only speculate as to, to why it dies. But I think it's, it's really a, it's a, it's a political, for a lot of it, it's political. Well, I, I think we had um, initially started out, we had some, some quality bills and some good intentions for this uh, legislative session. But as long, uh, the longer the session went, a lot of those good things died along the wayside. And so uh, at this point in time, I don't think that we've had uh, much of a very fruitful uh, session this year. We've done a few good things, but uh, the things that we really, really needed to do to uh, help serve the people that we represent in the state of Mississippi, I don't think we've done uh, nearly enough to, to satisfy those needs. What was the most disappointing part for you? Well, I think uh, the transportation uh, aspect of it, you know, we have a very serious problem with our roads and bridges all across the state. It's just very dangerous. Um, infrastructure has just crumbled to um, um, a degree that uh, I've never seen before or we've never seen before in this state. And uh, we just haven't addressed uh, that issue yet. And that's very critical. Uh, it's a safety issue and it's very important to the people that we represent across the state. Well, of course, the lowest thing was that when, when we were not able to, after all these years, not able to get the lottery pass. That, I guess, was, uh, that was the low because I was disappeared. Because there, everywhere I go, somebody was asking me, how is the lottery going and what are we going to do about the lottery? That was the low. But you were here and you was listening to them. What were some of the ones you were listening to that you thought it might, might have been high? Just from my perspective? Mm -hmm. Well, I thought there was a dramatic highlight during the session when the education bill was um, essentially killed over on the Senate side. Yes, yes, yes. That was, I guess, one of the highest things. You know, we tried to do it in, in the House, but we were not successful. But when they were able to kill it in the Senate, that was a definitely big thing for us because there were things in that bill that would really would have been detrimental to our education department, and we are glad, glad, glad that they were not able to get it out of the, the Senate. Do you think this is a win for Democrats during this session? Well, to a degree, I would think that we probably won some, but when you don't get what needs to be done for the people, it's not a win for either party. Governor Bryant has selected a member of the House to serve as Commissioner of Agriculture and Commerce. Republican Representative Andy Gibson of Braxton was introduced to head the state agency on Thursday. He has served in the House since 2008. He's an attorney and a Baptist pastor. 
Gibson takes over for Cindy Hyde-Smith, who was appointed by the governor to serve out the term and then run for the seat of retiring U.S. Senator Thad Cochran. I've got some goals for agriculture and commerce here in Mississippi. I want to build upon the good work that Commissioner uh, Cindy Hyde-Smith has already done, the foundation has been laid. Uh, I want to see agriculture grow and thrive. Uh, I want to see us grow the pie, let the pie grow of agriculture, not regulate it too much, not put it out of business, not uh, 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 shrink it, but to grow it. And as it, it, may be, uh, it may come as no surprise to you, I intend to do that uh, with a conservative governance philosophy, all right? I am a conservative. I will govern in the executive branch as a conservative and try to get government out of the way so that people can make their own choices and uh, the economy of agriculture can grow successfully. Agriculture is a $7.6 billion industry in our state. Let's get straight to the point now with views from both sides of the aisle. Austin Barber is a Republican national strategist. He's the founding partner of the Clearwater Group. Brandon Jones is a Democrat. He's an attorney with the Beria Jones Law Firm and a former member of the House. Brandon, Austin, good to have both of you with us, as always. All right, let's talk about the session. Uh, Austin, good, bad, disappointing. How would you describe it? Uh, I think there's an incomplete category that needs to hmm. be offered to me at this time, Wilson, and I think it's, uh, I, I would check that box, um, particularly uh, on infrastructure. Look, I have always said that infrastructure is a big priority, and it just didn't happen. And the governor clearly said uh, in his, in his um, interview with Mark uh, earlier in the show that he's going to act on infrastructure, and I think that means that a special session is coming sometime probably in the next 30 to 60 days for the legislature to come back and work on the infrastructure uh, project. Look, the infrastructure issue, excuse me. Uh, there, there's some things that they did get done. Uh, I'm very pleased to see and hear that revenue numbers are up. That means that more taxes are being paid. Um, and even uh, and with the fact that taxes are going down, um, you know, revenue collections, tax collections are up. People, more people are working, more people are making more money, which is a good thing. But I'm, I'm deeply disappointed on infrastructure. I'm not going to sit here and say that. But I do know, as we all know, this process is not over, um, even if that includes a special session. And hopefully, if a special session is called, and I should probably remove the first word of that sentence, the word if, because it's only when, that they get in, get it done, and get out. Brandon, good, bad, disappointing, incomplete? You know, you're watching those interviews. It's kind of like, you know, we got viewers that went to all of our colleges across Mississippi. It would be like if the coaching staff from your favorite football team here in state got together and had a press conference after the spring game mm -hmm. and was trying to explain how they were playing an inner, you know, an inner game, uh, a, a game amongst themselves, a scrimmage, and somehow managed to lose. And all the coaches were blaming each other. Republicans have a super majority in both chambers. And they cannot find their way to the finish line on the issues that they outline themselves as being important issues going in. If any of us did our job this poorly in the private sector, we would be fired. We would be cleaning out our offices. What they should have had there is a picture of Philip Gunn holding a box with all of his belongings in it, heading back to Clinton and Tate doing the same thing, heading back to Rankin County, because they have failed in their work. And that's as simple as that. If you can't get it done when you've got a majority of the folks that you're supposed to be working with and then you run these political ads saying how much you're going to get done, then you've lost your right to govern. And that's just simply where we are right now. And so the infrastructure thing is an important piece of this, and we've all talked about it. Why is it important? Because no company's going to put money in your state if they're not confident that the employees that they put there are going to have a nice road to go down, that they can get to the hospital, they can get to the schoolhouse. And then we have the, the safety concern, and Governor Bryant mentioned it. And so it, it's, a, it's a big deal. Alice Clark said, none of us win when we don't have success. As a Democrat, I am not pulling for failure on this scale. But now that it's happened, we have to be honest about it, and we have to say this legislature is just not up to the challenge. No, well, that's not, I would just totally disagree with you in your last statement. I, 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 I um, 
am disappointed. I've said this, that infrastructure was not handled. It is a big issue. The House said it was a big issue before the session started. The lieutenant governor said it was a big issue. The governor said it's a big issue, and it didn't get handled. And I think it was one small variable that we don't have time to get into the details of why they disagreed about, why they couldn't get the, the, the package complete and passed and move forward. Um, but, I, and I hate to see a special session called. I hate to see them not get it done before they sign and die, before they go home. And I'm sure they feel the same way, but you're right. They will be graded. They will be judged on what they do on big issues. I think when you look at Medicaid, they were able to put aside the differences they had on how to get the Medicaid technical amendment bill passed. That basically is the bill that tells Medicaid, this is how you're supposed to run the division and handle the program. I was very pleased to see that they protected community hospitals and those hospitals' ability to stay financially secure while they'll deal with indigent and Medicaid patients. Hospitals have always been concerned about, we've got it, we, you know, federal law says, we can turn no one away. That's the right kind of system. We need to have safety nets of emergency rooms sometimes to protect people, but we have to make sure there are programs to make sure that these hospitals are protected financially and the, and, um, the legislature handled that. It, it went all the way down to the last minute, but they were able to come up with a program, which they didn't for infrastructure, and that's another big issue, and I um, hope that the governor does call them back so they can get that solved, and hopefully they'll get in there in one day and get out in one day. I, I did hear Governor Bryant talking about they put the budget to bed and they passed a Medicaid technical amendment. It's kind of like when your child comes home from school and says, I went to school today. What they leave out is I set fire to my math homework and I got sent to the principal's office. Getting a budget done is the same thing that's been done ever since we've had a legislature. I mean, what are you bragging about? Yeah. And then the Medicaid technical amendment, we always have a technical amendment and it always gets passed. They're doing a victory lap for non-issues. I mean, they are literally taking credit for oxygen and for we walked into the Capitol a set number of days and then we left it. And then, you know, that's it. Well, that is not something that you brag about and it certainly doesn't match the verbose language that was used in the governor's state of the state during the early part of this session talking about what they were going to accomplish. It doesn't match Lieutenant Governor Reeves' plan of all the different points he was going to accomplish or Philip Gunn's plans. And so let's not grade them on my report card. Let's grade them on their own report card. Here's what you said you were going to do and you didn't do it. It's an objective fact. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's worth asking for Mississippi viewers and Mississippi voters to say, what are we getting out of our investment in the Republican Party? We've moved, we've put the Republican parties in control of everything. Are we really getting any return on that investment? Well, so far what we've gotten is, is vast improvements in terms of education, in terms of funding, in terms of scores, in terms of teacher pay, in terms of a multitude of different priorities that they've set forth for charter schools to bring more competition into schools. We see revenue estimates are up while taxes are going down. That's very important. I give you this, they are incomplete on infrastructure right now. They're incomplete on changing the way the education formula is. But folks on your side of the aisle don't want it changed, so y'all are probably happy about that. So I, I'm with you. There's an incomplete on infrastructure, uh, but that's got to change when the governor calls them back in a special session, and we'll see what happens at that point in time. Well, BP was a layup. Jim Hood, the attorney general, handed him a billion dollars and said, you bozos just figure out how to spend it. And they spent three months, and now they can't figure out how to spend it. That's nonsense. I mean, that's a layup. That's, that's not an issue that we would be talking about at our businesses. Hey, Here's some money that we went out and got. Let's find a responsible way to spend it. That was just a weird own goal that we had really no reason not to reach an agreement on. And again, look, there's a whole lot of different reasons for that, I'm sure. But as you look at this from the outside, you just think we're not even doing the easy things. Well, and I'll say, you know, Democrats were very upset um, last year. And there were some Republicans, too, that we were cutting state agencies, cutting state agencies, cutting the budget of these different state agencies. Uh, I don't think there may have been one or two small agencies that were cut. I don't even know if that's accurate. But I know there's new money for education, foster care, and public safety, all three very big priorities for Republicans. Um, and I think that's important to talk about because revenue estimates are up, there wasn't another uh, draconian type cuts to all these different agencies that we saw last year because revenues were down. Brendan, if we do have a special, sec a special session to deal with infrastructure, what would you like to see come out of that special session? That, that's what this bunch needs is overtime. Let's, let's call them back up here and let them try this again. I mean, wh what are we doing? I, I, I mean, 
somehow those two gentlemen that we just heard from, the heads of their respective chambers, are going to come together over what Governor Bryant thinks, but we don't know what it is yet. Look, I hope it happens, Austin. I, I, you know that. I know that. I you, want you, us to. I yeah, really do want us do. to pass it. But I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking. Wow. You, you, you're much like Alice Clark. You, you're not. You don't. You're not partisan in wanting Mississippi to fail. No. You want to see them yeah. succeed, and then I think that's a very admirable of your part. And you're frustrated on the issues that you don't think got handled, and, and I'm you know frustrated that infrastructure didn't get handled. But I do know that there's still time on the clock. I wish it would have been done in the regular session. It was not. You can tell those two gentlemen and the members of their of, of their bodies are, are upset about the Senate and the House as well. And they've got to figure out a way to get past you know the little particular nuances of the problems that they have with fixing our infrastructure problems in the state. They've, they've got to be pragmatic and figure that out. And I'm certain that they will. And I hope that they will get together before the governor actually says, come on this day, so that they can come in, they can spend as little tax dollars as they can, and get out. It's a terrific point. And that's one thing that I think mystifies folks who view this process. You don't have to wait till the governor calls you back to that's Jackson true. to talk to one another. That's right. They need to be on the phone right now. They need to have the, the, all the central folks in there looking at this. And uh, Lieutenant Governor needs to call those folks who made those amendments that messed up the bill the first time and say, hey, how do we keep those amendments out? And I'm sure they are. We are out of time. <clears throat> Gentlemen, thank you. Thank Another you. session complete. Don't forget, you can check out the program on our website, mpbonline.org slash issue. That issue will return in the fall. Until then, thanks for joining us. Good night. <laughs>